Welcome to a new in the mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. We have a selection of different items received in this mailbag, same as every time. I'm gonna start with this USB to RS-232 serial adapter cable. And inside this, uh, there is the famous prolific PL2303 chipset. And there's nothing wrong with that chipset, but many people have had problems with that, including myself. And those problems are mostly related to fake chips, because going on AliExpress and purchasing the cheapest USB to serial port cable adapter you will find uh, will most certainly ensure you get a fake chip. Better cables that use genuine chips from Prolific, like this U-Green branded one, are more expensive, but it should pay for itself in the long run by providing reliable connections when you need them. I like this uh, particular model because it comes in a 2 meters length. Uh, sometimes you would use a cable like this to connect to some large piece of gear and it might be helpful to have this 2 meter length of uh, cable at your disposal. And I believe this is some good quality shielded cable. You can pretty much feel the uh, shielding inside this. And there is a simple tool from Prolific to check if uh, you have a genuine chip inside or not, you just have to connect the cable to your computer, install their uh, latest driver, uh, you provide the COM port to the tool and it will let you know if it finds a genuine chip uh, connected. This one is uh, genuine, I, I checked, so I'll put links in the description to places where you can purchase this uh, cable branded Ugreen because this is uh, the good stuff. You can also design your own USB to serial converter on a PCB and in that case you should check out PCBWay.com. They offer professional PCBs manufactured at affordable pricing with fast turnaround times. They also offer complete turnkey solutions where they handle everything from sourcing the parts to assembling and testing your boards before shipping so you can get them fully assembled. Check out their website linked below. Next I have some tactile switches and these are somewhat uh, different from the usual black cap tactile switches that you are uh, probably used to because these have a small LED tucked in there and the caps have these uh, predefined shapes this makes them kind of nice for putting in a project because you can have a back illuminated tactile switch with the uh, function that you need and there's various uh, shapes that you can get for these uh, caps. I was actually searching for this style of tactile switch with illumination but in a surface mount version. I couldn't find any so uh, I ordered these through hole ones although I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to use them in my current project. Still they're uh, something nice to uh, have. So here's one that I uh, powered on earlier. You can see it has a green LED and it shines through the uh, keycap which is pretty nice. If you have seen any surface mount tactile switches with illuminations in these uh, small sizes please let me know in the comments where I can find them. I want to try something like uh, that in a project. I mean you would think that it would be pretty easy all they need is to design the switch to have like a transparent uh, plastic path for the light and you could just uh, install an SMD LED under the switch but I haven't seen anything uh, like that available. Next I have a kit of uh, lure lock needles in all sorts of uh, styles and sizes and these are really useful if you're working with supplies that come in a uh, syringe form and these include uh, gel flux, solder paste, UV curable, solder mask and maybe other stuff as well but these are the three that I use often on my bench. Uh, you can't really clean these uh, thin needles after uh, using them so you kind of have to discard them and use a new needle for every job. Luckily these are fairly inexpensive when you buy them in a kit uh, like this so check them out. The link will be in the description below the video. My next item is an aluminum heatsink which uh, suffered a little damage during shipment. This side is slightly bent. 
uh, but I can fix that, it's not a big deal. And this type of heatsink is designed to fit a uh, solid state relay on this side, which will be attaching using uh, these two holes, which are also present on the relay. However, if you feel there's something else you could fit in here, uh, there's really nothing stopping you. On the other side, uh, the, it kind of has this uh, slot which makes me think that it could maybe be a DIN rail compatible mount uh, but you also get a couple of standard uh, mounting holes to attach it the good old way by screwing it down to a panel. Should you get yourself a, a black anodized aluminum heatsink or a silver finished one? I hear you might ask. Well, I'm gonna answer the question, but first I want to make it clear that this is a very cheap heatsink and uh, it looks like it's painted and not anodized. Now with that out of the way, uh, consider that a black heatsink will radiate heat better and that might matter when used in a passive convection cooling system. That can also be a disadvantage, for example, having components near a black heatsink will mean they will catch some of that radiated heat, but for most hobby pro projects, the difference is not enough to care about it. And I hope that answers your question. My next item is this uh, very simple 2-inch spring type clamp. This is the type that is used in maybe woodworking or uh, other similar shops and you may have encountered uh, this situation yourself but on my electronics bench I often need something like this when working on various projects while doing tests and measurements on the bench sometimes due to the nature of the project I need to have a board sitting in a particular spot in a particular orientation and these types of clamps help with that or sometimes you have wires coming out of your bench power supply and it's useful to route those in a certain way and just clip them to something on your bench so they're not in your way. For those situations, these cheap and small clamps can make your life easier. So do yourself a favor and keep a couple of these around. I'm sure you'll put them to good use. Next, I have a couple of these uh, brass uh, cleaning brushes and you've probably seen this model before in a video where I got a bunch of 3D printer related stuff. Well, I've ordered another set of these to keep as spares. I just like the build quality on these uh, brushes. The handle is ergonomic and allows you to get in there and clean the nozzle of the 3D printer, but just as well, they could be used on a variety of other tasks. And like I mentioned before, these are way nicer than the typical black handle style brushes that are uh, widely available. It's just one of those tools that uh, will wear out and it's nice to have spares available, especially in my case where delivery time from AliExpress is one to uh, two months and I consider myself happy to get my packages that way. Next up, I have a cool Bluetooth development board based on the NRF52832, which is like a popular chip from Nordic uh, people seem to like this chip and for good reasons, so I thought it would be nice to have like a dev board for this chip, especially for someone in my position that offers consulting services and builds hardware for various companies. Uh, having dev boards like these ready for testing and prototyping an idea can be very valuable. This particular board is based on, uh, on this module from eByte which is this uh, Chinese company that specializes on building RF modules. They have a very wide uh, selection and uh, I also have some of their Zigbee based modules. They're good, so I think they're worth considering uh, for your next project. Next, I got a couple of uh, rolls of what you'll find named as green high temperature resistant tape. This stuff clearly mimics the uh, captain tape or polyamide tape, but you know you shouldn't expect the same level of quality and performance from a roll of this tape that costs 20 times less than the uh, original 3M tape. It's going to resist temperature fairly well, but it's going to lack a lot on the adhesion properties when compared to some of the good tapes. Still, for the price, I think it's a good deal if uh, you can work and use that lower adhesion property. Next up, I have a dev board based on the uh, popular STM32F 
103 microcontroller from ST Microelectronics or so you would assume because uh, there are replicas of this microcontroller and you would imagine it's not so difficult to get some of those unmarked and just laser etch them so they look like the original STN32 and then you can assemble those on these cheap dev boards sold on AliExpress. As far as I know, those replicas can run exactly the same code 99.99% .99 of the time. However, there might be limitations when it comes to timing. You might not achieve the same bus speeds reliably or the replicas might use slightly more power. Not a showstopper for hobby projects, uh, but it's good to be aware of this possibility when you sense something is not quite right or when you find differences between two apparently identical boards or chips. My next item is a small CAN transceiver adapter board based on the TGA1050 chip and you would use this to basically hook up a microcontroller to a CAN network and this chip will handle the physical interface, the voltage levels required for CAN bus. This module is pretty cheap, I already have a full development board which has these on board but I wanted to get some spares, you know, just in case something happens and I blow one of those chips or maybe I want to create a separate node on a bus, these will help me with uh, prototyping that. Next up, here's something interesting. Did you know something like this existed and you can attach your phone somehow around your neck with this gadget? Well, trust me, it's, it's not such a great idea because, I mean, I can't show you this, but having this around your neck means the screen will be uh, right here up against your chin. So how are you going to use that? That's, that's just too close to your face and that's a terrible idea. However, that's not why I ordered this. I ordered it because I can't find this type of uh, phone clamp otherwise to purchase it separately. Uh, so this is what I use on my uh, tripod for uh, a while now and I like this type of foldable phone clamp, exactly this uh, model. I find that this is much simpler to use than uh, this older style of uh, clamp. So I wanted to have a, uh, a, a spare uh, just in case the uh, one I have on my tripod breaks. So I'm just gonna harvest the clamp from this kit because uh, that's what I need. I also got a different style of clamp. It's similar because it's uh, foldable, but the uh, construction on this one is uh, pretty different. And frankly, uh, this m has maybe a bit more strength in the, the spring. So I kind of preferred the other type because it would be easier to mount a phone if the spring is not so tight, especially if, if you have a wide phone like uh, I uh, have for shooting video. But if uh, the spring action doesn't bother you, uh, I mean the build quality on this one is pretty good, maybe even better on, when compared to the other one. And it also has this uh, an another way, an extra way of adjusting uh, through this uh, tripod mount, which you can rotate and even adjust the angle on it. So this one is pretty nice as well. Next, I have some uh, magnetic adhesive tape and this is about 10 millimeters wide and 1.5 millimeters thick, one meter long. And although it's Mark 3M, I don't believe it's the genuine stuff simply because of the price I got it for, but nonetheless might be good enough for sticking something to a fridge. I would be curious if the Genuine 3M stuff is also low magnetic strength like this one is or if it's any better. I mean this one for example is pretty weak, it needs to kind of sit fully flat with a metallic surface to provide any useful sticking force but even so I wouldn't trust it to hold anything more than like a picture to a fridge. Next I have a couple of these simple white OLED screens based on the SSD 1306 controller. 128 by 64 pixels, I2C interface. Although I believe the controller is capable of spy interfacing, it's just how this breakout board is designed to only bring out the I2C interface. 
These are not your typical 0.9 or 1 inch display sizes. These are 1.3 inch, so slightly bigger pixels on these, which makes them easier to see, but it also means they are a little bit more expensive and harder to find than the uh, usual ones. I tend to use these whenever I build prototypes that need some kind of screen to share information to the user, so it's like a building block that I keep around in my box of uh, display units. As usual, you'll find the links for these in the description below the video. And the last item in today's video is this uh, sensor module based on the MAX 3102 pulse oximeter and heart rate sensor. In a previous video, I showed you one of those pulse oximeters from AliExpress with integrated OLED screen. In this video, I'm showing you this sensor. You can use this to build your own wearables that track vitals. This sensor is a complete system enclosed in that package and it includes internal LEDs, photo detectors, optical elements and low noise electronics with ambient light rejection. And the interface is digital through I2C, so you just need to access some registers and read your uh, data, which is pretty convenient. I think it's reasonably easy to grab one of these uh, TTGO uh, watches or sport bracelets development kits Design your own board and integrate something like this sensor on the little window present on the back of the bracelet and you could then track your vitals and maybe even store that data on a uh, local database on a Raspberry Pi or something like that. That was all for today. Same as always, you'll find links for all of these items in the description below. Check them out and let me know in the comments if you found anything interesting to order in this video. To the left there will be a playlist with all of my mailbag videos if you want to check that out. Thank you for watching and don't forget to hit that like button to show your support. See you next time.